All right. Yeah. You guys are live. Just give us a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, it sounds good. Yep. I know. Great. Okay, so this is going to be. Somebody has their audio computer to turn off. That was me, sorry. Sean, I have a state ethics one. Would you like to give it to Mallory? Mallory. Okay. <laughs> this would be a state uh, yep, you're on it. You're on it. Okay. In fact, we need to check those tomorrow to make sure. Yeah, I'm going to get those. Yeah. I, want, I want to get you close to the. So you want me to walk around or just stand on? <laughs> yeah, don't trip. And then your job. Mr. H will let us know when we're ready to go. Yeah, we're almost there. So. Mr. Horzemba, where do you want the kids to stand to present the sign and everything? Is it best to be up where you are or facing you? We have three three different camera angles tonight, so wherever's convenient for them. And we have a microphone here with, I think, a 10 or 12 foot cord. So. So standing in front of your table is yeah, the best? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. So basically, spotlight for everybody the video that you want the people at home to see whenever, like I would be talking. Nice. Okay. If you have an in gallery mode, you can see what's talking with it, and you can see everybody. Else. Okay. Okay, we're ready when you guys are. All right. Okay, we'd like to uh, call the work session agenda of the Belvern Area School District, uh, the order on April 20th, uh, 2021, if we could all uh, rise for the saying of the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Madam Secretary, if you could please take roll. Director Kovach? Here. Director Ingstrom? Here. Director Kelly Rodriguez? Okay. Here. Director Fort? Here. Director Grata? Here. Director Livingwood? Here. Director Harhai? Here. Director Kovach? I think you call me sorry. first. Director Kazanko? Aye. I'm here. And Director Waco? Here. So um, tonight we are very fortunate. We have two presentations. The first one I am going to call up um, Dr. Sable and he gets to introduce this group. Please watch the cords. I apologize. Please don't trip and fall. Um, I will be short, but uh, good evening. Thank you for letting us um, present our project. Um, when I got hired here, I formed the committee you know, school improvement team. Um, and through that team, we've come up with various projects to improve our school, whether it was by physical appearance, um, by things happening inside, or things to help the students and teachers feel a little bit more comfortable and things of that nature. Um, it did take a small hiatus when COVID started. Um, and this project actually started last year, and we rekindled it this year. Um, and it is for an improvement of the outside sign. The, um, it's one right out the window here. Um, at this time, I'm going to introduce Mr. Pappas, and he's going to kind of explain the processes um, of which the students followed and things that happened throughout this whole year to make this project uh, come to light. Thank you, Dr. Sable. Uh, real quick, this, this class 
took a different turn this year and, and part of last year because of COVID. And as a capstone course, some of the activities that we normally would uh, participate in uh, were on a larger scale and um, involved some other organizations and companies. Uh, so this is kind of the perfect storm for us. We were looking for an opportunity to, to make this happen. And everything kind of came together with uh, the right timing and students were very excited about it. So this evening we have uh, Samesh Desai and Mac Pavlish here and uh, Sam and Mac are gonna come up here and, and walk you through uh, their process and coming up with a solution to um, make this improvement that Dr. Sable discussed. Sam? All right, so like Mr. Papa said, we our goal was to replace the sign outside by the teacher's parking lot. And so we came up with four different designs. Here was option one, option two, option three, and option four. And then we actually sent out a Google Sheets to the teachers and students, and the results were overwhelmingly design one. So, sorry, design two. <laughs> and then we decided to do a brief mock-up where we just printed out letters and, oh, well, here's the final design, I guess, but <laughs> here, next slide. Here's the mock-up where we printed out letters and put it on a piece of cardboard and we held it outside to see what, just to get an idea for the font and the scale and everything. And then the next step was to actually cut out a sign on a piece of wood with the CNC router to make sure the cut would be fine. And then they went outside, held it up, and then we made it look like it would actually look in real life. And then there's obviously before and after. <laughs> So we just need approval to change the sign from what it is now to what we want it to be. Here's a brief uh, materials list and overall cost. The sign's made out of HDPE, which is high density polyethane, which is weather resistant. And the stone is, has a 20 year warranty on it. So anything that happens, it gets replaced. And here, if you wanna pass that around, is a sample of the stone that would be going on the outside. Yeah, so with the, yeah, so we modeled everything in uh, maybe go back. Back one more. One more. So we modeled this infusion, obviously the stone and the letters cut out. And the way we tested it was um, on the CNC router, which is essentially a drill bit that moves on an X, Y, and Z axis to count each letter. And then, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Uh, we were thinking we were thinking about lighting. We don't have any major plans we want to, but I mean that's obviously we can add that if people want that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's always. No, we're gonna get rid of the old sign and then. What's the substrate? The existing sign. The existing sign comes down completely. Then we'll put new posts, new concrete, everything. Yeah. But let me tell you that existing sign was put up when the building was put up more than 55 years ago. I was in my 20s. Oh. Maybe the Ross Traver Historical Society oh my. would be interested in it. It's so oh, doggone yeah, old. Sure. We're going to hand deliver it to you, Jeff. Perfect. Oh, uh, deliver it over to Ross Traver Historical okay. Society. They have a keystone from the old LaGrange School, too, that goes back, I believe, to 1935. We'll take it wherever you'd like. Okay. I mean, we can always add the flowers. <laughs> and here, here is actually the mock-up. Oh, good. Uh, oh my goodness. That's so, like real size. Right? Yeah, that's that's actual size. I don't know if everybody can see it. I'll move out of the way. Just a quick question, is, is, are, is there gonna be anything gold on the sign or not? Yeah, 
No, it's just green and white. They're not permitted. Yeah, that, that material uh, is bicolor, so it's black veneer on it, and the white is the, the, the substrate color. Uh, when the CNC hits it, it goes to white. Uh, they have other colors, nothing close between the scale. It would sound good. Mike, let me suggest that if you need a few extra bucks for something like solar lighting to accent the white at night or for a few flowers or something, I think if you let me know, we may be able to get you some money either through the BVA charitable fund or elsewhere, but just let me know. I would like to say, um, Crystal and I had a meeting with some executives from the CFS Bank, and they wanted to do a project. And we thought this was a great project that they could fund because um, they really liked the student-driven aspect. I think that you should be commended for what you came up with. I love that this was from the ground up done by students. I think that is, is pretty amazing. Um, and, and I think the product looks fantastic. I like that you got the, the students involved by taking a survey to see which one they liked. So I, I think you should be really commended, Mr. Pappas and, and the students for what you did for this project. I think it's fantastic. Very nice of the students, by the students and for everyone to enjoy and appreciate. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'm the only one living that's on a plaque. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one alive, I tell people. And this isn't like if you come up after the meeting, this isn't the material that this is going to be made from. This is just something, Lord knows, when we know the price of wood right now is outrageous. So, Does anyone have any questions for the students about what the process was or what they did? Yes. How's it going to get installed? That'll be our maintenance staff will have to do that. No, no. Oh, no, you guys are going to no. do it all? Yeah, I mean, these guys, I'm, I'm very fortunate. This my entire roster, and specifically the DVD class, uh, they have been nothing short of spectacular this entire year. No complaints. Um, they're anxious to come in every day and work. Uh, and they're anxious to get this installed. The only thing we may ask is that the uh, excavation for the footers are provided. Okay. Outside of that, we, we may have regular discussions on the installation of this during the school year by the time we get materials or, or after uh, graduation, when they come in, whenever we get it done. So very excited to Thank get you. it in place and continue to drop past it. Oh, well, that's fantastic. After the fact. We have to feed them pizza and donuts, but we'll make it happen. You can make that happen. We can make that happen. Can you can get them back on the side? Uh, it'll be written on the inside. That was cool. See, that was when I was a kid. I was like four or five years old at that point in time. And that was a big thing to kind of capture. I was just thinking maybe when they pull it up, we'll find something. It might be cool to throw something in there or whatever. We, we removed that time capsule and reheld the 50th anniversary celebration three years ago, most of which has been cataloged and is now part of the Ross Traver Historical Society offerings. So again, on behalf of uh, the Belvinary School District, uh, thank, th thank you to everyone involved and good teamwork, collaboration, and walking us through the process. So there's no questions. Again, thank you and job well done.
if the district paid me 15 grand. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, they should have designed all the signs. So next, um, I, I would like to do recognition. Um, we have Gianna Fidelli. Um, this is uh, really special. So she is the daughter of um, Gino and Susan Fidelli. She is being honored tonight because of her exceptional writing skills. This led her to be recognized both locally and nationally in the Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. Uh, Ms. Carol Frau is the one who sent this to me and was very, very excited about this. And I know she's an amazing teacher. She couldn't be here tonight because of practice, but she wanted to make sure that we recognize. Um, so Gianna was a Scholastic Gold Key winner for her poem, The Year 2020, one for the history books. This poem was also named an American Vision nominee. Only one work from the entire region received this distinction before moving on to complete nation compete nationally for this distinction. Can you hear me? So we're gonna have her come up and read part of this, but there's some other things that I wanted to read also, is that she also won a Scholastic Gold Key for A Rainy Memory, which is a memoir, where she used symbolic image of rain to represent her emotions concerning the loss of her grandmother. Uh, students who are selected as Gold Key winners locally, they move on to national competition. She was selected as a national winner for her poem. So think about this a national winner for her poem. Poetry is a category that receives a large number of entries, which makes her a national selection even more impressive. She was recently honored at the local Scholastic Awards virtual ceremony. This is the bummer part. Typically, national winners go to New York City to be honored at Carnegie Hall, but unfortunately due to COVID, this award will be virtual, but you should still be so proud. Please come up. We want to hear a part of your poem, or you can do it from there if you'd like, whatever you're more comfortable with. Okay. Um, since my poem is long, I'll only be reading four stanzas, so I don't take up all of your time. <laughs> The title is The Year 2020, One for the History Books. So it begins, the year 2020. New year, new calendar. Set goals, make resolutions. A clear vision. The possibilities to renew, repeat, refresh. The year 2020. Moving forward. Economy flourishing, life is moving. The days are passing. The year 2020. March arrives and roars like a lion, a hungry pandemic, brings uncertainty and fear, uncharted territory. The year 2020, a quarantine, everything closes, creates isolation, leads to loneliness. Life has stopped, days are long. Thank you. Uh, Gianna, I've I've been a writer all my life, but I, in, I, in, I wish you very good luck. And I, in the way you started is a great start, and congratulations. But I do have a question. Who taught you to drive? <laughs> <laughs> I think I know. <laughs> not yet, right? Not yet. Oh, not yet. We're working on it. Oh, OK. <laughs> you should be so proud. I mean, this is a huge Absolutely. I think it is amazing. I, I have the, the fortune of reading all of this. I will send it to the board. I think it is just amazing. So you should be very, very proud of yourself. Parents, you should be very, very proud of her accomplishments. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming tonight, too. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I am always amazed by people who can write poetry because I just think it is it is beautiful and I think she did an amazing job on a very relevant topic to all of us. All right. So next um, we will go on to um, our agenda for the evening to go through. We have, obviously, um, we'll have the approval for the agenda at the meeting. We'll have comments from citizens. 
Um, we don't have any um, one in. We did have two people who signed up, but I believe they are on um, virtual. So communications information only. We will have our monthly departmental reports. Under communications information only, we have the Westmoreland Intermediate Unit Board Meeting Report from March 23rd. We have the CWCTC Joint Operating Committee Report from March 4th. And then we have the request for prior approval for tuition reimbursement for um, Jacqueline Katner for two courses at Cal U. Any questions about those? Under contracts agreements, 1.1, um, we have an adjudication of student 80411. 1.2, um, we have the reporting and awarding of bids for that. bus supplies and parts. Um, that is 1.2 and 1.3, and you can see what is listed. Under 1.3, the awarding of the bids to Penn Power Group. Any questions about that information? Okay. These are just the cost. We don't have to. That's it. This is who this had who had the lowest. 1.4 is to record the bids for motor, motor oil and lubricants. We had two submit a bid. 1.5 is to award the bid to PPC lubricants. One point six is to record the bids for tires and recaps for next year. There were three bids submitted. The awarding of the bids, because there are different items, Bob Summerall Tire Company had for item three, and Goodyear Tire and Rubber had for item one recaps and item two. One point eight is the Westmoreland Community Action Head Start Memorandum of Understanding. We have been asked to update our MOU. This was a statewide recommendation. So we work with them to update our MOU. We do have a Head Start class that is at Ross Traver Elementary School. They are part of our um, kindergarten transition program also, so that we are aware of kids coming in from Head Start into our elementary buildings. 1.9 is for Interim Healthcare of Pittsburgh and Uniontown, a staffing agreement for the 21-22 school year. There was an increase um, only for CNAs. Currently, we only use RN and LPNs, um, and this is for our students that require nursing needs um, on a personal care bit basis. 1.10 is to purchase window panels for Ross Traver Elementary School. This is in the sixth grade area. They do not have any panels that open in their rooms. Um, and this is one of the recommendations to use ESSER funds for to cover that 11,600 for those panels. And that is using AB specialties. 1.11 is the medical opt out payment. Um, this is listed for Dr. Godzak and myself in lieu of family medical coverage for insurance. Any questions under communications contracts? Okay, any are questions we, online? Are, oh, yes. Are we going to put ESSER money in one, two, or do we have to use it for three? It would be in two or three, yes. Correct. All right. Um, under budget, resolution approving the parameters for the debt ordinance for series of 2021 general obligation bonds. One of the decisions that we do need to make is regarding the 2013 bonds, um, whether that is included. Now, when they wrote the resolution, it is included as an option, but we will need to be very clear if we're going to, and that was something that there is a savings there, but we will send that information out to make a determination for that. And will you provide that after the uh, report from Moody's on Thursday? Yes with the blanks filled in so that the board can consider and share that information yes. prior to our meeting because it's an important decision and it could be uh, resulting in a considerable savings for the district uh, over a number of years. Oh, yes, we will send that out. And we have that Thursday at, I believe, 10 o'clock. 
All right, personnel, um, this is something that we will be talking in executive session. Facility usage requests. So we have some of our first requests. We have for the Bell Vernon area youth wrestling. Um, all of the people that have submitted a request here have submitted their COVID plan um, to tell us how they will be handling situations. We have a request for Betsy's Dance Center and Dance Company by Lori. Yes, Director Kovach. Yes, uh, just getting back to the uh, request for the Belvern area youth wrestling, you could see that the request they wanted to start last week, April 13th. So basically, you know, obviously tonight's April 20th. Is there any objection if, I mean, we're, we're basically uh, hopefully going to formally approve this next Monday. Is there any objection if they start using uh, the facility tomorrow, provided that they have submitted all their paperwork and their, uh, you know, uh, uh, forms? I, su I support Dan. Okay. So, so basic. And, and the second thing is, you know, when, when basically, uh, you know, a, a, a member of their organization contacted me and was wondering about the $105 charge. And again, in the spirit of transparency, so we all have the same information. I don't know how long ago, but that organization donated the wrestling uh, room mats. And they were just, this is the first year we're kind of charging that organization. And the way I explained it to them, as you know, over the last year, we basically wanted, we came up with a tier BVA facility usage fee schedule because the district was basically not looking to make a ton of money, you know, on especially our feeder programs, but just so something fair and consistent. And that, you know, we just had to no longer, you know, kind, kind of lose money on, on people using them. So $105 for the time requested, I think it's fair. But again, I just don't know how much money was tied up in those mats when I was investing. I just want to make sure other board members had some input. I know we just moved some mats down to the Plex, uh, some more mats down to the Plex that were at Ross Draver Middle. So we're going to have more area to spread the kids out to with the second set of mats down there. Full disclosure, I'm involved. I help coach with Belvern Area Youth Wrestling. And, you know, I know that we have, you know, there's not a lot of kids at this time of the year, uh, folk style wrestling, which is high school style wrestling season wrapped up about two weeks ago with our state championships. Uh, now they're moving to the freestyle season. That's Olympic style wrestling. So there will now be not as many kids, you know, most of the kids have moved to baseball or soccer. So I, I think talking to the other guys down there, the maximum amount of kids they've had is about seven or eight. So I don't expect, you know, especially with a second set of mats, uh, any, but any issues with that. And I mean, if anybody, if it comes down to the point, I'll pay the 105 bucks, I don't care. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you let them know it's okay for them to start tomorrow and then we'll- I'll call officially... Tim as soon as we're done. Perfect, okay, great. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, if, if, it's, if, if it's a big deal, I'll, pay, I'll give you, I'll go to the ATM and get 105 bucks and hand it to us tonight. <laughs> Dustin. Yes. How, about how much does mats cost? I, I'm not aware of any of that stuff. Okay. Uh, the, the mat we have now for the high school stuff was a little bit more expensive, but it's a custom printed mat with a leopard on it. Practice mats, I mean, the mats we have there, they probably run anywhere between 2,800 and 45 to five grand. Minimum, you're gonna pay for a new mat, it's probably around 3000 bucks. If you get a used mat, you can get them out the door a little bit cheaper. But I mean, they, they probably, I don't know this off the top of my head, but I would say they probably have somewhere in the neighborhood of three to five in them, so. And those and those mats that they bought are being used by, you know, the, the kids in the, in the high school as well in the program? Yeah, if it, what Dan said is correct. I, again, this this predates my time in the re youth wrestling program by a, a couple of years, but those mats have been there for four or five years, and that was part of the Plex deal also. So I support Dan bringing this to the table. My son's involved, so I kind of I kind of hung back a little bit. I didn't really want to push anything here, but um, you know, I, I know it, it's we've been sending our kids to Monongahela for wrestling and in a lot smaller building with a lot less rules not that and they've been really accommodating it's been great but the the opportunity for you know the the baseball players have been in the fields here uh soccer players have been on the fields here we had football players on the fields here it's just going to be nice to have some normalcy for our for our children that you know choose different sports that aren't such mainstream sports so that's really all i have to say sorry no thank you all right any questions about facility requests all right, next we have financial reports A through H. Under new business, we have the first reading of three policies. 
and 150. We have the adoption of a policy and that is 137.1. Any questions about policies? Okay. Employment of personnel um, substitutes. We have a custodian under coach or assistant varsity softball coach. We have John Christner, and we have a volunteer varsity boys soccer coach in JT Plavchek. Under game managers, we have Mike Polat, Sean Novak. This was put out to the BVA EA members also. Under resignations, we have Walt Gerota, who is a custodian at Ross Draver Elementary. I would like to say Walt has done a fantastic job. He is going to be a, a loss for us. Um, I have to say he is always a pleasant, pleasant person. Always goes out of his way to say hello to everyone and just a, a very nice, nice guy. And the way he interacts with the students is, is very impressive. Yes, so he will be missed. Well, Mr. Walt is definitely a cherished um, we under number five, we are recommending under um, to replace um, Mr. Gerota is Tim Lester for custodian. And then we have um, an employee for FMLA and three employees for unpaid leave. Any questions? All right, um, committee reports. I don't know if there's anything now that anyone wants to. Typically we do those at the board, but I didn't know if there was anything anybody wants to bring up for committees at all. No? All right. Well, I, I am on, I think, the curriculum technology and arts committees. And building a little bit on what Justin said is the fact that even though we have all these activities coming up, as we typically do at year's end, it's nice to know that once again we're going to revive the musical it's going to be four nights it's a little bit different this year i think it's going to be down at the weir on a field bring lawn chairs but i think uh, mr kern maybe can you tell us a little bit about that because that's one thing i still don't see on the schedule or publicized but i'm anxious to see that because we have so many talented students in the arts and this is going to give them a chance to showcase those talents in a public setting as appropriate. And fortunately, we're able to do it again. Yeah, absolutely, it's really exciting. Uh, we leave it to the director to send us the publication materials that they want to put out for advertisement. Obviously, that's his realm and he lives it. Once Mr. Rosell sends us the, the information they're using for PR, it'll be on the website we sent out. Um, one nice thing was the use of Sapphire. We found it really accessible to post things in the community portal that are not just limited to text announcements. So to put a PDF or a flyer or a JPEG in Sapphire, it would be a link. It's not going to show up there as a photo, but they could click the link and it would take them right to an advertisement or the ticket booth or whatever we want uh, to connect the, the students and their families. It's going to be pretty interesting because the venue is going to be the actual playing surface of the weir. Yeah. It's going to be four evenings and bring your own lawn chair. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Yeah. They were practicing as everyone here came in. So. I also have to give Mr. Roselle credit because I, you know, he, as we know, last year was very disappointing with the musical, with the shutdown and everything going on. And he really wanted to make sure that the kids had an opportunity to perform this year. So I think he, he went outside of the typical box to, I mean, I don't know how many times you hear a musical going on in a football stadium or just a stadium in general. And so I think he is really trying to do something that is very student-centered and to make sure that they get to perform. I'm optimistic and hopeful that the public will support this in the, this year in this venue as it has in the past because we've had great attendance and turnouts at these events and the same should occur this year because safety measures will be in place. But once again, we have such great talent up here and we want to show it to the community and to the world. Absolutely. All right, does anyone have any other curriculum information they want to talk about? I, yes. I just I just got a little bit of confirmation about them. We paid for the underneath mats and the wall mats, not the actual wrestling mats themselves. 
I just asked what we paid for it and I'm trying to wait for a response. But yeah, we paid for the wall mats and the underneath mat underneath the main mat. And uh, they don't have that right off, you know, right off hand. But again, that's you're looking at a couple of thousand bucks. So. Well, and I can tell you, we just purchased wall mat mats and they are not um, inexpensive. So yeah. I'm sure that they donated a nice penny to do that. All right. Um, any other announcements? Did you have a, anything? Yes, for the the bond or the bond ordinance, um, we do want to include the 2013 A bonds. We think it'll yield a savings of approximately thirty five hundred dollars. So including that in this refunding would be favorable to the district. Great. All right. Um, Director Engstrom, do you have anything for comments from the board president? Uh, that'll be at the regular meeting. Okay. All right. How about um, any comments from anyone in our audience? Oh, I'm sorry. Director Kovach, I didn't yep. step over. Uh, just, just real quick, just want to make the uh, board members aware that we did receive a thank you note from uh, student Nick Rita, thanking us for taking the time to recognize uh, his Eagle Scout accomplishments. So again, it's a nice thank you note and a follow up to our recognition last month. I love to see the stuff the students do. I really do. That's the, the best part of the meeting because I think they amaze me and all the things that they can do. All right. I yes. do have one question. Um, under adoption, number one, um, just for clarification, Michelle, is it says um, by any student enrolled in an in-home education program, um, that home education program, is that through VBA? No, so they cannot. So in-home education programs are homeschooled students. That's what this policy is referencing. So there are requirements of what we, what students are allowed to do and not to do. And that's what's in this policy. And remember, this comes from PSBA. So these are things that are recommendations that we need to follow. I personally want to give that a closer look because, you know, do we oppose a charge like we're planning to or are opposing a charge, for instance, for cyber and charter schools, those students who participate in the arts and athletics over here. I think the difference for homeschool students versus, for example, cyber students are that the homeschool students, there is no charge for them to be doing homeschooling. Um, for cyber school, their funding goes to our cyber schools and, and more. I still have kind of a philosophical, theological sort of problem with that. Unfortunately, and, and Ira, this may be something that you want to address. There are requirements um, for students to be allowed to participate in extracurricular activities. Yes, the school code school code requires that homeschools homeschoolers be permitted to participate in extracurricular activities that are that are not uh, tied to, to to curriculum work or graded. Uh, I will tell the board that there is legislation pending right now that actually was reported out of the education committee, which would expand that right to include homeschoolers could attend up to so many classes a week in school. So there are things happening in this area, but we cannot charge them for extracurricular activities uh, beyond what you would charge your own students if you have a fee for something but you cannot charge them as homeschoolers alone. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ira Weiss. Uh, I think we both agree that we don't always agree with what the legislature does either. Amen to that. Zero <laughs> percent. All right. Yes. Okay. I, I just have one thing on, on this is actually on a little bit lighter note. This <laughs> I I got four text messages today asking why we shut the schools, all four schools back down. And I said, we didn't shut, all, we had a little bit of an issue with, at the middle school, but it's a smaller building with kids a little bit tighter. So there were some issues through the Department of Health and the Department of Education. And there's rumors going around that we're shutting all four buildings down this week. And the funniest part is somebody when texted me before, right before I got here and said, I heard that you told somebody that we're shutting the buildings down. I just want to warn people, don't read into the rumor mill. I mean, at this point in time, really, we've moved forward. 
And if you have questions about that, please don't, you know, especially please don't use one of us and say that we said that we're shutting the buildings down. Because if anybody's ever in the last 18 months listened to anything I've ever said in here, that was not the plan of action I'd be following, which so I find it amusing slightly. But I just wish that, that people would take the time to, to reach out to the administration or reach out to, you know, not even us, because the proper chain of command says to reach out to your building principal, your teacher, and, and worst case scenario, the superintendent. So before going out and spreading, you know, fear in the community that we should probably, you know, try to confirm these, that these are nothing. I don't even know where these came, came from, but according to somebody, I told them. So I uh, just just. Going forward, everybody would be really, you know, if you have questions like this, please don't scare everybody. You know, reach out and ask a question. We we had an issue, but it was conveyed through peach jars, but all the parents knew. I mean, that we haven't had any, you know, there's been no serious repercussions on on this. So just going forward, it, it would be it would be good if we can try to not not try to fear monger and try to think positive and move forward in a positive light. We've been able to open these schools. We have some facilities now open. We have, you know, we're going to have a musical. I mean, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I mean, I think we have people that are in pretty much agreement that, that we want to try to keep, uh, you know, one foot in front of the other. Uh, so we're not really trying to take steps back. Just I, I support what you say, uh, Director Kostenko. I was hoping to bring a matter up uh, when we go in executive session and it's considered under the health and safety plan and that goes to Monday we closed the middle school and although I realize administration is following CDC and other guidelines uh, I don't know really what we accomplished and whether we solved uh, the COVID problem just by closing the school one school one day to be honest with we you. We kind of end up hamstrung by the state and it, it's right. and, and let me explain that so we are back in substantial and we have been this is our third week now the county so if you remember, we had to fill out an attestation form in November, I think it was. And that form very clearly says that we will follow and I've sent it out to all of you to chart. Now they've updated some. So when we were notified of these cases, we went directly to that chart. So we are, are trying to make sure that we are following everything. We are communicating. Um, a letter is coming out today. We had another case, but it doesn't change that 14 day rolling period because it happened before a week. So. We are trying to follow everything and, and do everything that the best that we can and communicate. We will not close the buildings without communication from me. That won't happen. So if, if there was a short notice, we would get it out through school messenger. Yeah. Um, when we and have, Dr. Day. we'll do it through peach jar and social media and our website. So I'm Dr. suggesting Dr. we Dow don't overreach, to, uh, we don't overreact and we don't rush to judgment. So, so, yeah. so Dr. Dow, so, just, just to clarify what you're saying, is we don't have any other options at that point. Once you, hit, if, since Westmoreland County or Fayette County, you know, we, we comprise two counties, whichever one is in the significant mode. I mean, we have to adhere to those guidance that's offered. Right. So once we hit a certain amount of threshold, it's not an option not to close a building. Yeah, we're not overreacting or anything. No. We're just following the requirements issued from the PA Department of Health and PD. Correct. Right. And, and I will be very clear too. We have been very fortunate in this district. And if you look at other districts, I will speak from where my daughter goes now. Um, her building has been closed down three times since January. Um, so this is happening all across. And it's unfortunately, it's the number of cases and the size of the building that dictate what happens. So we are following those guidelines to a T. Yeah. Right. And again, Dr. Dow, uh, Dr. Dow, I just I just want to you know reiterate what Justin said that. We have been very, very uh, transparent in putting information out on social media, putting it up on the website, emailing it out to parents. So Justin, to your point, it, it, it's well said. I'd encourage people to read what we have put out before reacting to what they think it is. Um, and in addition, we do have to follow the Department of Health guidelines. That's not an option. Uh, we have to follow them and, and we need to do that. And I think it's prudent to, to remind everybody that, well, we are well on our way. Uh, things are improving significantly. We are not out of the woods yet. This is not over. Um, Justin, you put it well, we're taking one step in front of the other, but we're not sprinting. We're not just gonna race it in and say we're done. Uh, we need to be still continue to be diligent. And I would like to reiterate, um, Vicki McCullough, who is our pandemic coordinator and I, we talk all the time. We are not looking to close buildings. That is not our goal in any way, shape or form. It is a significant amount of work to even have that happen. So we want everyone to be safe. We just have to follow those guidelines. And I agree, if you have a question, 
My email is out there. It is on the website. Please send me an email. I check it all the time. I will be happy. Even if you have a question that you heard this, I can respond to you or I can get back to you and let you know, but I am always available. Sorry to open that can of worms. <laughs> I, I think it's very relevant. And I think that it's, it's important that we are trying to communicate. Um, you know, we debated on sending out the letter that we sent out today about the case that happened that we were just notified of, but it actually started last Tuesday. We just knew about it today, but we thought we want to make sure that, that parents know it didn't affect what happened, but it, it, it was a case that occurred back then. So we've let everyone know what's going on. I would like to that I think it would be a good idea. Um, I don't know if all board members feel the same way. Um, when we go back to the board minutes for historical purposes, you know, we have our board packets that we get. And I understand there's some things that you can't for personal reasons um, that have social security numbers on it or um, personnel information you can't put in there. But I do think it would be good to have the background information loaded onto the board packet because you go back and you look and you don't understand why some of the decisions were made because you only have this you don't have the context of why some of the decisions were made like yeah how you were talking that's important for the public to know and it's going to be important for the public to know 10 20 years from now why these decisions were made you need more than just this you need the background documents so I think we could look at, because um, we've talked about board docs is another option that we'd really like to look at pursuing. But I think what we could do is anything that is not of a um, personnel related issue or a student related issue. Yeah. Um, so an example would be if we are purchasing gym mats, we could put the, the vendor um, quote in there. Right, like there's a lot of other school districts that have all of their that have all like the informational for information only purposes, um, communication, all of that type of stuff. Department in there, all of those, mm -hmm. like they do. All of the bigger schools. Another okay. good example is Fox Chat. You, you mean on the website that yeah. everybody on can see it? With all, the all, of all of that stuff should <laughs> like be available to the public. And I think a lot of that has to do with how we do it. And I really think this is something that the board needs to look at because I think we need a system to do. Um, what we're doing, it, it works, but I agree we could include that information. And if you use, for example, the IU uses um, Agenda Manager, it's called, and it's just another company, but it's very nice because I can go back and reference stuff of going into that, um, that I don't need to have special access. I have access granted to me, and you can see all that. The board docs makes it really nice for the end user as well, because each agenda item has a little paper clip by it so that you can just open it up right there. Um, and you don't have to like dig through files or folders. Well, and absolutely, but I mean, as far as like, what if you never, you go back, you want to go back to say 2008 to see why something was done. Right. You should be able to see this meeting and then the documents that support this meeting. So when you go to our website now, there's a little um, like board, you can see the policies on board docs and it would just be the agenda with all the attachments mm -hmm. right, right there. Yeah, and I say for instance, you can just grab that from our drive right now. And right. Just snap it up right there. Right. Just well, we would have to. Yeah, we, we have, have to redact. Thing. Right. We would have to redact that. I completely so, agree. There's some things that shouldn't go on there. But there's a lot of things that do need to go on. So I think what we'll do is I I think I'd like to if the board is in agreement we could get some pricing from board docs um, for the next meeting to talk about what that would cost to do that because I do think that we need to update how we're doing some of. The, the agendas and the items and how we're storing them because we are oh, I would consider to be archaic right now what we're doing <laughs> hole punches <laughs> yeah it's yes you still need to keep a physical copy you will still have to do that but it will be much easier to create that physical copy with using something like board docs you can put a whole year's worth of information on a jump drive now instead of filling up a whole wall with right. the stuff right okay all right any other uh, comments from the board or the administration? If not, we'll go ahead and adjourn. And I just would like to announce to the public we will be going into executive session after this meeting. And we had an executive session prior to this for personnel reasons and legal reasons. Um, were there any comments from citizens? No? Nope? Okay.
All right. Thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful evening. Why don't we take about a 10 minute break and then we'll let them.